Good morning all. Today we are going to handle the topic performance of transmission lines. In our previous video sessions we have seen the various transmission line parameters. They are actually resistance, inductance and capacitance. In actual practice these parameters are uniformly distributed throughout the whole length of the line. Among these parameters the resistance and inductance form the series impedance. The capacitance parameter exists between conductors in the case of single phase line. Whereas in the case of a three phase system, this capacitance parameter is existing between a conductor and the neutral conductor. This particular capacitance parameter introduces some complications in the transmission line calculations. Based on the manner in which this capacitance parameter is taken into the account, the overhead transmission lines are classified into three. They are short transmission line, medium transmission line and long transmission line. This particular classification is made based upon the length and the voltage rating of the overhead transmission line. In the case of short transmission line, the line length is only up to 60 km and the voltage rating is less than 20 kV. Due to their small length and the lower voltage rating, the capacitance effects are also small. Hence, the capacitance effects can be neglected in the case of short transmission line. Next is medium transmission line. This line is having the actual length of 60 km to 160 km and their voltage rating is between 20 kV and 100 kV. In this case, the capacitance effects can't be neglected due to their sufficient length and voltage rating of the line. In the case of medium transmission line, the distributed capacitance of the line is divided and concentrated at one or more points for the purpose of analysis. Next is long transmission line. In the case of long transmission line, the line length will be definitely more than 160 km and the voltage rating will be definitely greater than 100 kV. For analysis of long transmission lines, a rigorous methods are employed. We will see the performance of each of these transmission lines in detail. The transmission line parameters are considered to be uniformly distributed throughout the whole length of the line for exact analysis. But in the case of short and medium transmission lines, reasonable accuracy can be obtained by considering these parameters as concentrated ones. We will see them in detail in the upcoming slides. While studying the performance of transmission lines, it's very important to determine the value of voltage regulation and transmission efficiency. We will explain these two terms in detail. First we will start with voltage regulation. It is actually defined as the difference in voltages at the sending end and receiving end expressed as a percentage of receiving end voltage. To get a better understanding I will be considering here the equivalent circuit of single phase short transmission line. In this diagram you will be able to see this is actually the sending end and this is the receiving end where the load is actually connected. It's very clear from this equivalent circuit that the values of Vs and Vr will not be equal. This is mainly due to the drops which are occurring in the series impedance path. This difference in voltage that is the difference between Vs and Vr expressed as a percentage of Vr is said to be voltage regulation. The relation is given very clearly here. This can be also defined as the difference in voltages at the receiving end alone under two conditions that is under no load condition and full load condition expressed as a percentage of receiving end voltage under full load condition. This explanation is valid because under no load condition, the value of Vr will be same as that of Vs because there will not be any current flowing through the series impedance path and hence there will not occur any drop, any voltage drop in the series impedance. Therefore, under no load condition, the value of Vr will be same as that of Vs. And during full load condition, the value of the terminal voltage is Vr. So we can also say the definition of voltage regulation as the difference in voltages at the receiving end under no load condition and full load condition expressed as percentage of this receiving end voltage under full load condition. Next is transmission efficiency. It is actually defined as the ratio of receiving end power 
to the sending end power. The expression is shown here very clearly. The receiving end power is expressed as Vr Ir cos phi R and the sending end power is expressed as Vs Is cos phi S. You very well know that this is actually the standard relation for power that is uh, in the case of AC the power is said to be Vi cos phi that too in single phase system. So if you are looking here the receiving end power is said to be Vr Ir cos phi R where ascending and power is said to be VSIS cos phi s. Definitely the power which will be obtaining at the receiving end will be definitely less than that of the power which is being sent from the sending end. This is due to the losses which are occurring in the transmission line. Next we are going to see the performance of single phase short transmission line in detail. Just like we mentioned before owing to their small length and low voltage rating the capacitance effect is not taken into consideration therefore only resistance and inductance of the transmission line is only taken into account it can be clearly seen from this equivalent circuit also here the capacitance effect is not taken into consideration Vs represents the sending end voltage and Vr represents the receiving end voltage R is the resistance parameter and XL indicates the reactance caused by the series inductance. The phasor diagram is drawn here considering the load to be inductive. During our phase of study we will consider the phasor diagram of lagging loads only. This is because in the universe 90% of the loads fall under the category of inductive load. Let it be motor loads, lighting loads etc. In this phasor diagram this line OA is indicating the receiving end voltage. As this load is inductive in nature, the current which will be flowing through this load will be lagging this voltage by an angle phi r that is drawn here, lagging Vr by phi r. In order to get Vs, we have to add the resistance drop and the inductive reactance drop along with the Vr that is Vr plus this drop plus this drop will be giving you the value of sending end voltage that is Vs. So we have to add these two drops along with the Vr vector. So the Vr vector is shown here. In order to draw the resistance drop vector we have to draw a line parallel with this current vector at the tip of the receiving end voltage vector and this represents I into R. This length is smaller than I because the value of resistance will be comparatively very very small which is definitely less than 1. Next we have to draw the vector of inductive reactance drop. Always the inductive reactance drop will be perpendicular to that of resistance drop. So you have to draw a line which is perpendicular to this resistance drop line and this BC will be indicating the inductive reactance drop. So the resultant vector OC which is actually the vector sum of VR, IR and IXL will give you the sending end voltage. The same phasor diagram is indicated here also. So if you see in this vector diagram we have completed this triangle in this triangle this OC is indicating the hypotenuse and OD and DC is indicating the two sides of the right angle triangle. So we can very easily write Vs square is actually the sum of OD square plus DC square. OD is actually the sum of OE and ED whereas DC is actually the sum of DB and BC. This OE is actually Vr cos phi r if you consider the right angle triangle O E A this side will indicate V r cos phi r and E d is same as that of I r. B d is same as that of A e. From this right angle triangle it is very clear that A e is actually V r sin phi r. So definitely B d will be V r sin phi r. So now O d can be written as the sum of O e and E d. O is actually Vr cos phi r 
and ED is actually IR. Similarly, DC can be written as the sum of DB and BC. DB is actually VR sin phi R and BC is IXL. Make the suitable substitutions. You will be able to get the value of VS square like this. From here, we can write the relation for VSS square root of VR cos phi R plus IR square, the whole square, plus VR sin phi R plus IXL, the whole square. From this relation, we can find out the value of Vs if all these parameters are given. So once if Vs and Vr are known, we can easily find the voltage regulation by using this relation. You don't need to by heart this relation. You just need to know this phasor diagram. If you know this phasor diagram, you can write this relation by yourself. Next, you have to determine the sending and power factor. The sending and power factor is actually the cosine of the angle between the Vs and I, that is cosine of phi s. It can be easily determined by the ratio of OD by OC. OD can be written as the sum of OE and ED. That is Vr cos phi r plus ir divided by Vs will be giving you the value of sending and power factor. The power which is being delivered at the receiving end is Vr ir cos phi r and the losses which are occurring in the line is actually I square R. So definitely the power which is being sent from the sending end is VR IR cos phi R plus I square R. So this term is actually giving you the power which is being delivered at the receiving end and this is actually the power which is being sent from the sending end. The ratio of this two will be giving you the transmission efficiency. An approximate relation for Vs can be obtained by expanding this line OA and drawing perpendiculars from B and C over this line which can be very clearly seen here. This BG is actually the perpendicular drawn from B to the line which is being produced that is OA being produced is shown here as dotted line and the BG is actually the perpendicular drawn from the point B. Similarly CF is also a perpendicular which is being drawn from C to the line which is uh, being produced by OA. If you analyze this phasor diagram, this line and this line both are parallel lines. So definitely this particular angle will be same as that of this angle which is phi r. This is phi r so definitely this angle also will be phi r. As we have mentioned before, the angle between this line AB and BC is 90 degree. This is actually 90 degree. This angle is phi r. So if you consider this triangle, please see very clearly the triangle which I am indicating by using this cursor. Okay. So because of uh, this particular point is not named. So the triangle which is taken into consideration now is this one. This is the line AB, this and coming back to A. This is actually a right angle triangle with this angle as phi r and this is 90 degree. So definitely this angle will be 90 minus phi r. As this angle is 90 minus phi r, definitely this, ang this angle also will be 90 minus phi r. If you consider this triangle, this is also a right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, this angle is 90 minus phi r and this angle is 90 degrees. So definitely this particular angle will be also phi r. In different ways you can show that this angle is phi r. The method which I used here is I have taken this triangle. In this triangle, this angle is phi r and this is actually a right angle triangle. So definitely this particular angle will be 90 minus phi r. As this angle is 90 minus phi r, this both angles are on and the same. So definitely this angle also will be 90 minus phi r and this angle is 90 degrees. So definitely this particular angle will be also phi r. In this phasor diagram, this OC can be approximately same as that of the value of OF. This OF can be said to be the sum of OA and AF. 
OA is actually VR, AF is actually the sum of AG and GF. From the right angle triangle AGB, we can very easily say that AG is actually IR cos phi R. The value of GF is same as that of BH. So if you are considering the right angle triangle CBH, this BC is indicating the IXL. So definitely this will be IXL sin phi R. So the value of GF is also IXL sin phi R. Therefore OF can be said to be VR plus IR cos phi R plus IXL sin phi R. This is said to be the approximate relation for VS. If you are finding the value of Vs by using this relation and by using this relation, both these magnitudes will be almost same. This approximate formula will give correct results only in the case of lagging loads. That is the particular load which we have taken into consideration. Please keep that in your mind. You should not use this relation in the case of leading loads because this relation is obtained from the phasor diagram of lagging loads. Next we are going to obtain the same relation for Vs in complex notation. In complex notation the vector Vr can be considered as the reference phasor and it is usually represented as Vr angle 0 that can be written in rectangular form as Vr plus J angle 0. The current I is actually lagging the reference vector by phi r angle so it can be written as i angle minus phi r and in rectangular form it can be written as i into cos phi r minus j sin phi r vs which is actually the sending end voltage is actually the vector sum of vr ir and ixl and this vector sum of ir and ixl can be together written as uh, i z Therefore, Vs can be written as the vector sum of Vr and Iz, which is shown here. Vr can be written by using this substitution. Instead of I, you can use this relation. And Z can be written as R plus J into Xl. By solving this, you have to just open this brackets and multiply it. We will be able to get the relation like this. This relation is obtained after separating the real and imaginary parts. From here we can write the relation for Vs as square root of Vr plus Ir cos phi R plus Ixl sin phi R the whole square plus Ixl cos phi R minus Ir sin phi R the whole square. In this particular relation the second term this particular term is actually quite small so we can easily neglect them then we will be left with square root of Vr plus Ir cos phi R plus Ixl sin phi R the whole square which is actually Vr plus Ir cos phi R plus Ixl sin phi R. From this relation it is very clear that the value of Vs which is obtained by using this complex notation is same as that of the value of Vs obtained by doing the approximation here. With that we are completing today's session. In the next session we will study about three phase short transmission lines and effect of load power factor on regulation and efficiency. Thank you.